man, so please bear with me as I uh, invite some guests in. Glory to God, trying something once again new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And welcome. We're going to be starting here, starting this week. We are now going to be coming to you Monday through, Monday through Wednesday. Monday through Wednesday, right here on Kingdom Vision Radio and Facebook Live. For the Transforming Lives broadcast. Praise the Lord. This is something new and a little different. So we're going to see how it goes. And I pray that you can hear me on the uh, radio broadcast. I'm going to try something else here a little different here. Let me see if I can connect to the phone by Bluetooth. I, I'll feel better that way. So God bless you. Please bear with me. <laughs> While we get the bugs out and the kinks out, praise God, good morning, good morning. For those of you who are tuning in, please bear with me. Log in, it looks like we're... Blessings, blessings, blessings. And once again, welcome to the Transforming Lives broadcast here on Facebook Live and on Kingdom Vision Radio. And once again, we're trying something new. We're going to be doing this. I usually just broadcast on Wednesdays via the radio station. Uh, but now we're trying something new where we're going to be broadcasting either Facebook Live and uh, the radio broadcast. God bless you. Uh, welcome to the Trans Kingdom Transformation broadcast. And we're just going to start with a uh, word of prayer. And then we're going to get started. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded live. I mean, you know, I had it organized like this. So uh, some things I'm seeing now that I have to have in order <laughs> before I get started. Amen. So praise God. Oh, Father, we just thank you once again for this Monday morning. We thank you for this new day, a day that we've never seen before. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and for your grace, it was your love and your grace and your mercy that woke us up this morning, Lord God. And Lord God, because we're awake, because we're allowed to see this day, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you planned this day with us in mind. For us, Lord God, to go forth, Lord God, being examples of your kingdom, being examples of your image and your likeness, being examples of your moral character and integrity, Lord God. As we go forth, Lord God, being the examples that you created us to be, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray right now, Lord God, that you would give us our daily bread. Thank you, Lord God. Give us meat sufficient for this day. Lord God, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our spirits, Lord God. Transform us. Raise us up, Lord God. Mature us, Lord God. Bring us into the liberty, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you that you brought us into the liberty, Lord God, of the sons of God, of the saints of God, Lord God. Lord God, that you will continue, Lord God, to, to speak to our hearts, speak to our spirits, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, give us our assignment. Give us what you will have us to do for this day. Lord God, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord God, that they will receive this word that they have ears to hear and hearts to understand what the Spirit is saying. Oh, God, and that it will produce a harvest after its kind, some 30, some 60, and 100-fold. And this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and welcome once again to the Transforming Lives broadcast or the Kingdom Transformation broadcast. <laughs> That was on another radio station, praise God. The Kingdom Transformation Broadcast. Mainly because when you begin to understand and the Lord start revealing to you his will, his way, amen, what he wants us to do, what he created us to do, his perfect plan 
for us. Oh God, he wanted us to walk in his favor. He wanted us to walk, amen, in his power and his authority. He wanted to share his glory right along with us. Yes, it wasn't just a, he, he, he just didn't create us for religion. No, he created us for relationship. He created us to walk in power and glory and authority with him. Oh, we thank him for this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing, and we are glad in it. God bless you, uh, Robin and Dion, for coming in and coming on this morning. Please share this uh, with your followers, with your friends. Amen. I pray that you are blessed of the Lord this morning. Glory to his great name. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Try to get things straight here. Praise God. Transformation. Transformation. Changing. Coming from one, changing from one species of being into another. We have now become the God class. I was uh, speaking and preaching at a church. Hey, good evening, Sister Tanya. God bless you. All the way from down under, all the way from Australia. God bless you. Yeah, I know it's evening there. Praise the Lord. And thanks for tuning in. My hope and our hope for sharing on this broadcast, sharing this word, our hope is that we would understand and come into the understanding of what God's original purpose and intent was for us when he saved us. You know, when he saved us, when he brought us into this kingdom, when he delivered us from the power of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, what was it really about? Was it just to go to church and on Sunday and or Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday, whenever, you know, your midweek or additional services are? Was it coming just to be able to praise and leap and shout and dance? Amen. What Was it just to do that? Or was God looking for something more? Was it a greater... Was there a greater mission? Was there a greater purpose? And I submit to you that it was. I submit to you that there was a greater purpose. I submit to you that there was a greater plan and purpose for God. There was a greater plan. He came in to do more than just make you a religious servant. He came in to make you a son. He came in to restore you to sonship. He came in to restore you back to oneness with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came to restore you back to oneness with him. He came back to restore you, amen, to the original plan and purposes that he had just for you. I'm working around doing some things, changing some things. His original plan and purposes for us. And that was sonship. That was for us to be walking with him. I think about over in uh, Genesis 3 where, you know, they had messed up. You know, they messed up. They, they came in and, you know, Adam and Eve messed up. They, they disobeyed God. They, they rebelled. They, they abdicated the throne of the kingdom. Amen, that God had given them. Praise God. I'm just, yes, just welcoming some visitors and, and uh, viewers and bringing people in. So, over in that third chapter of Genesis, after they had fallen, there was this point that always stuck out to me, and we know that's where they hid from God, and God came in called them on the carpet. 
But one of the things that stuck out to me, even as I was uh, doing my teaching on yesterday, uh, visiting a church yesterday and sharing with them, the one thing that stood out in my mind is a part of that they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, in the garden. They heard this voice. They were well acquainted with this voice. They, they heard the voice. They heard the voice walking. Think about that for a moment. They heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And I think about how God had gave Adam the ability to name the animals, to name the plants, to name whatever God presented to Adam. Adam named it, and that became the name of it. And it just proves the fact that how God wants to dwell one on one with us. I shared about over in John 17 how that, <clears throat> pardon me, in Jesus' high priestly prayer, he said, Lord, make them one even as we are one. And what I wanted to get over is not just, glory to God, not just becoming one. You know, when we hear one, make us one, we think a lot about unity within the body. But actually, that's not what Jesus was talking about. What Jesus was actually talking about was making them one with him. You remember, you remember those who have seen the story, those who were here who have read the story about <coughs> when Jesus told was getting down and arguing with his good friends, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, you know, the the, the scribes, and he let them know that I and my father are one. He said that, you know, before Abraham was, I am. Uh-uh. He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad. They said, you aren't even uh, 40 years old, and you said you've seen Abraham. And he said, before Abraham was, I am that I am, my father, are one. I've seen other versions where it says, I and my father are one and the same. So that unity that Jesus was talking about, the Lord make them one even as we are one, was the oneness that God wanted us to have with himself. That they were this unbroken unit. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, Paul wrote about how the marriage relationship, I hope I'm not all over the place, how that the marriage relationship was a symbol, was a picture of Jesus and the church. Because, you know, when you get, become married, you're supposed to become one. You're one. Yes. And the two shall be, for this cause shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. So that type of oneness, that type of intimacy is what God is looking for. That's what God is looking for. That when Jesus prayed, Lord, make them one as we are one. He was talking about that same intimacy, Father, that you and I have. Let them have that same intimacy with you. Praise God. Let them have that same intimacy with you. Glory to his name. Lord, make them one. Mm. He wanted to share his glory with us. Jesus said, he told his disciples that it's expedient. The word expedient means necessary. It's necessary that I go away. For if I go not away, then the comforter will not come. And the Comforter will come to lead you and guide you into all truth and show you things to come. The Holy Spirit, God's grace gift, the Spirit that comes along to empower us and to enable us to live the life of God. It's an, it's an enabler. It's the, it's the power of God. Glory to his name. It's the power of the Lord. Amen, to come in and to help us and to deal with us and to walk with us. To, and not only is he 
of God with us, but he lives on the inside of us. If you are born again, the Spirit of the Lord comes inside with you, in of you to dwell with you, to lead you and guide you to all truth. There's another place in Scripture where Jesus talks about there's going to be a time where you'll be brought up before magistrates. You'll be brought up before kings. You'll be brought, up, brought before those in authority. And he said, but to think, don't think, amen, about what you're going to say. For the Holy Spirit, amen, will tell you and give you what to speak in that self-same hour. The Lord and the Holy Spirit is looking and wanting us to connect and be one for us to be so tuned in. I, I did a Facebook Live of, about a week or so ago that talked about over in 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and open the Bible to that. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified because that's where I found it, you know, to be revealed more. I say I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll read it out of the King James and uh, the Amplified. <clears throat> so, Second Timothy <clears throat> chapter 1 Second Timothy chapter 1 first in the King James Version it reads for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Now, let's read that same verse in the Amplified. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love, and of a, of a calm and well-balanced mind, and discipline and self-control. <coughs> Pardon me. I got to read it again. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Of a well-balanced, calm, well-balanced mind. There was a certain peace. See, that's where the fruit of the Spirit comes in, and we talk about the peace of God. And we, we talk about that spirit of God. And we talk about the Holy Ghost. And, and we, in the uh, you know New Testament, it talks about And Paul wrote that. Praise the Lord. I'm just welcoming some people, man. <laughs> it's been a while since I did this, y'all. <laughs> Getting used to it all over again. <clears throat> the glory to God. Welcome to everybody that just came on. My sister, Angela, brother, Mike. Yeah, Mike coming on and. Going and just everybody that's tuning in, God bless you, all of you, amen, for tuning in. Share this if you can, amen, with your followers, with your friends. Please share, please share, amen. So, once again, the mind, this, this peace that Jesus wants us to walk in. The kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17 tells us that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat, it's not regulated or relegated, should I say, to laws, rituals, you know, uh, dietary laws, all the things that people do in religion to try to make themselves, you know, pleasing to God. No, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
righteousness, peace, and that joy, that peace, and that joy comes, it comes from an inner knowing. It's an inside job. It's an inside thing. It's not something where you just, uh, how can I put it? It is not something that you just, uh, you know, it's not the absence of what's going on, absence of what's going on outside when we think of peace. Sometimes, a lot of times, we think of, you know, water and, you know, I like to sometimes go and sit in a place where it's quiet or at the park and, you know, there's grass and there's, you know, the water, looking at the water, you know, having a sense and enjoying the beauty of nature, you know, and we hear that and we see that and think that that is peace. But really, it's a inside peace because you can be sitting in that type of scenery, that quiet, you can be sitting on your porch. <coughs> you can be sitting on your deck. You can be sitting on your patio. You can be out there on the ocean cruise, sailing along, and you're looking for peace, and you try to quiet and relax your spirit. But if there's inner turmoil, if there's inner turmoil, if there's something going on inside of you, Glory to God. If there's something going on on the inside of you, if there's noise going on in the inside of you, then that's going to stop you. That's going to clog the lines from you being able to hear the voice of God. It's going to clog you up. It's going to cause you not to be able to hear what the Lord is saying to you. God wants you to be able to hear. He's always speaking. He's always talking. He's always reaching. He's always teaching. But if we have clouded thinking, if we all caught up in the cares of this world, if we all caught up in the things of this world, not having our mind focused, they, oh God, I hear Isaiah 26 and 3, he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Why? Because they trust in him. It is like, you know, we talk a lot about childlike faith and having that childlike faith. Now, a child isn't sweating, you know, what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, what they're going to drink. No, because they know that they who they trust in is going to make those provisions for them. That they that they trust in. And see, when we trust in her, just like that child, trust in that parent. If we trust in the Father just like that, humbly submitting ourselves. Amen. Because God does not want us to live a life of worry. He doesn't want us, he wants to walk in that calm, well-balanced mind. He wants our thinking, amen, to be clear. He wants to be able to have access to our spirits at all times. He doesn't want us to just, ah, uh, he's so caught up because we live in a time now where things are just moving, they're moving. Things are like that. I mean, even with Facebook and Twitter and social media, there's a quick little sound bite. There's a quick little, you know, word, a quick little quote, and we're moving through them. We're moving through them. And really, we're just reacting and not engaging our minds, not engaging our thinking. And so God wants us to have this well-balanced, this calm and well-balanced mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The Amplified said a calm and well-balanced mind. But God has not given you a spirit of fear. If anything's keeping you in fear, then that's coming from the other realm. It's coming from the other realm. <laughs> it's coming from... Now, I'm not against emotions. I'm, I can say being over emotional or letting emo, emotions take you over is one thing, but God gave us those emotions. He made us 
emotional to be able to 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 sense things here in this realm, but he wants us to be led by that same Holy Spirit that I've been talking about. He wants us to be led of the Spirit of God. He wants us to be tuned in, and he wants us to have this calm and well-balanced mind so that, it, so that the signal is always clear, so that the path is always open, so that we will be able to hear him clearly because it's the Spirit of God that searches the deep things of God. When we're connected by the Spirit, see, I just, I just love it. I just think about the life of Jesus because Jesus was this one. Jesus, let me see something here. Glory to God. Jesus, praise the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. What Jesus, Amen, did, and I, I, I just love it. Because what he did was, pardon me, I'm trying to, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time here. It's been a while since I've done this. But I think about when Jesus is at the tomb of Lazarus. I know I might sound like a book I've shared this before, but it's true. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. But for the sake of them that are here. He began to pray, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come out. And he called Lazarus out of the tomb. But he, what he said to the people was, he was letting the people know that, yes, Lord, I, Lord, Father, I know you and me got it going on. We have this one-on-one -on -one relationship. The lines are always open. The line is always clear. But for their sakes, that they might see the example that I'm trying to set, I'm going to say this out loud. Lazarus, come forth. I uh, began to share yesterday, in our meeting yesterday, about this trusting God, having this trusting God, having this, this calm, and we can have this calm and well-balanced mind when we trust in Jesus, when we trust in the Lord. And one of the things I shared yesterday was about when Jesus was asleep on the boat. It was raining, it was storming, lightning, the waves were raging. I understand that feeling being out there in that. <laughs> during my time in the U.S. Navy. I can remember times like that. I can remember seeing things like that. And so they're in this storm. Waves raining. God bless you. Nephew, I see you. We were talking about this last night. <laughs> but Jesus was asleep in the boat. Jesus was asleep. And his boys were panicking. Jesus got up and asked them, where's your faith? He rebuked the winds, he rebuked the rain, and he told the sea to calm down. He said, peace, be still. But what he was trying to show them, because he got them and asked them, where was their faith? Where was their trust? Because guess what? Jesus is trying to show them that the same thing that I'm about to do, you can do the same thing. I'll give you power. I'll give you authority. For you to call things into order. See, this, this dominion that he's given us is supposed to first be dominion over our own mindsets, over our thinking, over ourselves first. He takes it. I was talking last week, even when I was sharing this message before, or even in pre previous weeks of the word teaching here on uh, <coughs> Kingdom Vision Radio how that Jesus takes us through this process. The Lord is taking to us through a process of bringing us into this divine order. Peter, who was one of the original, he was one of the twelve. Yet even after Jesus' ascension, Jesus was not finished teaching Peter. Jesus was not finished bringing Peter into divine order. Because, see, Jesus, when he, he rose, he told his boys over there in Matthew chapter 28, right? The last chapter at the very end, verse 18. And he told them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every, listen to that, every creature. But what did they do? 
They stayed in Jerusalem. They just preached to their old folk, their own folk. They stayed in their comfort zone. They stayed in the place where they were religiously, politically correct <laughs> by just talking to their own and not dealing with Gentiles. But Jesus told them, they originally told the 11, should I say, because Judas had already did what he did and took himself out of the picture. But the 11, he told them, go into all the world. He didn't tell him to stay at Jerusalem. The only time he told him to stay at Jerusalem was after he came back. He said, stay in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. <laughs> yeah, to go do these things. But after that, go into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. But they didn't do that. They didn't do that. But then there was one that Jesus called. And I, and I tell you, I, I love it because this shows you the providence of God, the power of God, and yes, even God's good sense of humor because God had to go and save a Pharisee. <laughs> His name was Saul. Saul of Tarsus. He was a persecutor of the church. He was arresting Christians. He was going and he was kicking in doors and <laughs> locking Christians up and, and bound them from jail and even was there to give his consent to the stoning of Stephen. Paul was a mass murderer. Paul was a terrorist of his day. But God saw something. So I can use this boy here. And so God met him on the road of Damascus where he had orders in his hand <coughs> to go into Damascus, Syria, where the believers had, some of the believers had ran to go hide from the persecution that was going on in Jerusalem. And he went there and the Lord met him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he said, and then he rose him up and told him to go down to a street called Straight. And where he was down there, the Lord began to deal with him. And told him all the things he must suffer for his name. So Paul, we know that Paul went forth. And Paul, wow, he did that, that God and the Father through Jesus had commanded the original 11 to do. He commanded the original 11 to go into all the world. Well, Paul did that. Paul said Jesus called him to be a witness to him, to the Gentiles, and to their king. So Paul went about that business. But that stirred up. I hope I'm not taking too long to get to my point. But it, it stirred up Peter. It brought Peter to a place of maturity where they began to envy and see the power of Paul's ministry. Where they decided they would branch out and they would go out and they would begin to go to Gentile nations and preach this word. But it was a process of God dealing with them. <clears throat> it was a process of them yielding themselves to the Holy Spirit. Remember when the Italian centurion went and sent down to Joppa for Peter. <clears throat> and the Peter had the vision of the, 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 the vessel coming down from heaven with all kinds of unclean animals four-footed beasts that were unlawful for Jews to eat. And the vision, he heard the voice of the Lord say, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And But he said, Not so, Lord, with his religious self. I have not, I have never allowed anything common or unclean to come into my mouth. But then Jesus said, <clears throat> Don't call what I've cleansed common or unclean. Oh, that'll preach right there all by itself. Because that would take us out of our comfort zones. See, sometimes we, we call what we're not comfortable with unclean or common. You might sometimes want to look down our nose at people, but no, guess what? When you were out there in a world of sin and shame, God didn't look down his nose at you. As a matter of fact, he made preparation. He sent Jesus as the Lamb of God slain 
from the foundations of the earth. He sent them as the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world in preparation to restore us back to himself. And so we don't want to look at anyone as common or unclean. But Jesus wrote, but Paul, Peter, shall I say, rose up from this vision, went down to meet the men, went back to <coughs> Cornelius' house, preached the word, the Holy Spirit fell. <clears throat> they began to speak with tongues. And Peter received the revelation saying, My Lord, the Gentiles have received the Holy Spirit just like us. Ding! The light went off of Peter's head. Wow! This isn't just for the Jews. And I'm just praying. I hope that that thing, because that's what's not, Jesus' intent was to restore all of mankind. It started in, in Jerusalem. It started at home with the Jews. But his original intent was for all mankind to be restored. To be restored back to fellowship, relationship. Restored back to that one-on-one -on -one relationship. To be one with the Father. Just like that married couple, as I stated earlier, are supposed to be one. They're supposed to operate and function as one. One unit. One in mind, one in spirit. My God, one. Oh Lord, where they don't, there's no, there's no separation, there's no division. You don't do your thing, they do their thing. No, there's a oneness, there's an agreement there. Yes, you don't lose your individuality, you don't lose your singleness when you're married. We'll do a teaching on that at another time. You don't use your, lose your uniqueness. You don't lose your anointing. You don't use, lose your unique value and uh, purpose in God because you got married. No, you continue that. But you're building life together. You're building ministry together. You're in agreement. Yeah, together. So that's what the Father is looking for. And he's looking for that. And it's through a trust. It's in through, we have to learn to trust God. I stated earlier, thou will keep them out of Isaiah 26 and 3. He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in them. The Lord wants you to trust in him. He wants to know that you trust him. He wants to know, glory to God, if you're one with him, he wants to know if you're in concert with him, if you're walking with him, if you are in agreement, if you trust him. Because one of the things I've been stating over the last several weeks here on the Kingdom Transformation broadcast is that when we trust, if we say we have faith, if we say that we believe God, then we're going to, it's going to produce action, faith produces action. Faith without works is dead. Yes, faith without work is dead. It's dead. Faith without works is dead. We talk about the, the blessings of Abraham. And how everyone wants the blessing of Abraham. How everybody wants to be blessed and prosperous. And yes, God intends for us to have all of that. But what was it that caused Abraham to be the friend of God? What was it it caused Abraham, amen, to be one who God was well pleased with, the friend of God. What was it about Abraham? Abraham, believe as a matter of fact, I, I want to go to Genesis chapter 12. I've been talking about it over the last several weeks and been quoting it, but I, I want to show in the scriptures <coughs> that I'm just not making this up. But well, I want, to, want you to see what brought Abraham. Hey, cuz, good morning. God bless you. But I want you to see what caused Abraham to be blessed. We know that the Bible says that Abraham was very rich, had cattle, he had servants. He had all kinds of things going on. And see, we look at that life of Abraham, and we want that. <laughs> And God wants to give us that. But it's based on some things. 
that we must follow. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 12 and beginning at verse 1 and it reads, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now listen to that. The Lord said unto Abram, now, Abram lived in the land of Ur, the Chaldees, where idolatry was prevalent. <laughs> Everybody was worshiping idols. Everybody was having little statues and things, and that's the life that they lived. That was the culture of that time. But then Abram, God came to Abram with, in this voice, this voice that Abram had never heard before. According to the word, I don't know. <laughs> But it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. In other words, he was saying, Abraham, get out of your comfort zone. Leave the things, leave the people, leave the places that make you feel comfortable and go to a place and I'll let you know when you get to that place. Wow. I know a lot of times myself, I, I, I must confess that a lot of times I want to know what the next move is. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to leave me out there, are you? What the next step is, okay, God, what the next move, what we going to do now, what is this going to produce, and we want to know these things. But Abraham heard God's voice. He heard God's instruction. And listen to this, God keeps on talking. He said, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And then, oh, I love this part, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4 is where it is. This is how the blessing of Abraham kicked in. This is how Abraham received the word that God has spoke on him. Because see, that's what God does. He wants to speak to us. Let me read it. Let me read it before I get ahead of myself. It says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And listen to that. So Abraham, Abram departed. Verse 1 says, now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And verse 4 says, so Abram departed. Abram departed. Abram obeyed God. Abram obeyed God. Listen to that. God spoke to Abram. And this wasn't the only account of God of Abram's immediate, or Abraham's immediate obedience to the Father. Abram, listen to what he said to him, he said. Now, the Lord, listen, listen to it again. He says, now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. God, wanted, uh, God, because of Abram's obedience, God made Abraham's name great. We, hey, we talk about Abraham today, right? <laughs> he made his name great. He made his name famous. He gave his name. In other words, Abraham had a good reputation. He still does, right? We're talking about him now. He had a good reputation. He had a, oh, God. He was known for his obedience to God. He was known for one Amen. That would keep God's word, and mostly with the Father himself. He says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt bless, be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in, that, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, in my Bible here, it has a star by that verse, which means, that's a prophecy of the Messiah. That's speaking about the prophecy of the Messiah. And I, for years and years, in religion, when we talk about the blessing, all we was talking about thinking was when we heard that being a blessing, and through thee all the nations would be blessed. And a lot of times all we thought about was us receiving this blessing of Abraham, 
that through the nations, that through people in our sphere of influence, which we are supposed to be blessing to them in our sphere of influence, but we thought a lot about getting the stuff. But what the Lord showed me in this is that, that through, through this blessing of Abraham, that all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Now, how was that? It will come a time when the Lord said that I will give him a son, right? Who? That he said he would give him all this land, he would give him a son, he would give him a child, and through that child that all the nations would be blessed. But how would that be? It would be through Jesus. So when I look at that and we think about the blessing of Abraham, Jesus was the blessing of Abraham. <laughs> Listen to this. And, th and he said, curse me, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in him. So Abraham departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, his nephew. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go to the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. <coughs> so what, Ab what the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham obeyed. Abraham did it. He listened to God. I, I, I hope you understand what I'm, the picture that I'm trying to paint here is that God wants us to be connected to him, this oneness that Jesus was talking about in John 17, that God wants us to have that same type of relationship. I mean, it starts with being in his word. It starts with studying his word. It starts with studying the, the God, Jesus' message of the kingdom. It starts with reading the gospels and studying the gospels and studying the life of Jesus and obeying the word of Jesus. It starts with, uh, we like to talk about practicing the presence of God. We want to get into a place where we want to have an unbroken fellowship with the Lord. We want to have unbroken dialogue with the Lord at all times. I talked about earlier how Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord walking in the core of the day of the garden. And so God wants us to restore us back to that same type of fellowship where he had instant access to us, and we have instant access to him. And it's through, just like with any relationship, we have to learn one another. God already knows us. <laughs> oh, Lord, he knew us before we were in our mother's room where he spoke to the prophet Jeremiah when he called Jeremiah and said, before I knew you, before I formed thee, in your mother's womb, in your mother's belly, I knew you and called you a prophet to the nations. He said, before, I, oh my God, before I knew you, I called you, I sanctified you, and called you a prophet to the nations. So before you were born, before you got here, God had an assignment on your life. God called you for a purpose. He created you for a purpose. If you're here in the earth, God has purpose for you. He has a destiny for you. He has a calling for you. But you got to connect. You got to reconnect. He made, the, he made the way. Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundations of the earth. He made preparation for you. Amen. Even before you got here. And so he wants to connect us through obedience. Uh, they tell me I got 90 seconds. <laughs> He's telling us that through this obedience, to not see what we have to do, we have to go past just reading the word. We have to go from beyond reading the word to obeying the word. And as we obey the word, we become the word. We become transformed. One of the things I love to talk about, and I talk about often when I talk about this broadcast and how the Lord gave me the name for this broadcast, was all my years in the religious system of doing the church thing and, I mean, knowing this Bible, reading it and studying it and getting the scriptures. But how many of you know that knowledge puffs up? 
You can get so puffed up in this word. You can quote scriptures. You can, you know, quote it from Genesis to the map to the back of the book. You can, you can know it. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy, with God through the Holy Spirit, if you're not learning, if you're not becoming one with Him, if you're not allowing yourself to be, oh, taken through the process. Oh, God, of sanctification, being set aside for his purposes, being set aside for his uses, you are in vain religion. <coughs> You're going to the church house every time the doors open is in vain if you are not changing, if you're not maturing. If you're not becoming all that, now we might be good and, and tied into the, the doctrines of the church and the, you know, the do's and the don'ts of the church, but are we into the, are we into Jesus? Are we following Jesus? Do we know Jesus? Or do we know religion? Do we know our bylaws of our <laughs> denomination? Do we know the vision statement of our denomination? Or do we know Jesus? Do we know who this Jesus is? Are we in fellowship with him? Are we trusting him? Are we walking with him? Are we obeying his word? Are we uh, allowing his word to become flesh? John chapter 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God came, he sent Jesus to restore us back to that same identity. As Jesus is, so are we now in this present world. We're one with Jesus. Father, Make them one as we are one. Connect us, Lord. Make them one. See, Jesus and the Father were a complete, unbroken unit. God wants you to be that same unbroken unit. He wants you to be one with him. My Lord. He wants you to be one with him. He wants to be one with you. He wants the line of communication to always be open. We, I guess we're going to do some more talking about this tomorrow because we're running out of time here. Maybe we're actually out of time. But I got started a little late, so I'm going to go on a little further. But we talked about over in 1 Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind, the Amplified said, a calm and well-balanced mind. God does not want us, Jesus does not want you to be caught up in the affairs of this world. He doesn't want you to be caught up in worry. He doesn't want you to be walking around unsure and unstable because guess what? You being a born-again child of God, you're in, you've been brought into an unshakable kingdom. <laughs> Woo! You've been brought into an unshakable kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Hebrews 12, around the 28 verse. You are in a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. There's no economic collapse in the kingdom of God. There's no health care crisis in the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's no lack of peace in the kingdom of God. There's no lack of righteousness in the kingdom of God. But we must submit ourselves to this king. We must submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We must submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is our atmosphere in the kingdom. That's the atmosphere that the Lord always wants us to walk in. 
righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We've been delivered from the dominion of darkness and translated into the power into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Jesus told him in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Listen to that. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. No nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. God got you. <laughs> the Father has you. He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because they trust in him. Trust comes through building relationship. If you don't build a relationship with God, you can't trust God. You can't walk in the peace of God if you're unsure about who he is. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Wow. They that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a reward of them that doesn't you seek him. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that everybody else shook up for, shook up about and stirred up about and nervous about. is yours besides. It's part of your package. It's part of your benefits package of being a citizen of God's kingdom. Not just a citizen, but a son. Sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. We're going to shut it down for today. <clears throat> Praise God. And we're going to be back with you tomorrow at 7 a.m. for the Kingdom Transformation broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio. I thank God that you tune in with us in our simulcast here on Kingdom Vision Radio and here on Facebook Live. I'm going to do this thing a little differently tomorrow. Praise God. And we're going to be able to invite more people in at one time. But tell your people about this Monday through Wednesday here at 7 a.m. Eastern Time and every other place where I see brothers and sisters from all over the world, Australia. I see brothers from Africa. Amen. All over the world calling in, connecting with us and advancing God's kingdom, this kingdom transformation. I got to tell you about it. Oh, God, you have to understand and come into agreement with God. God's original intent was for us, amen, to rule here on the earth just like he ruled from heaven, and that we're ruling in conjunction with him in righteousness. God came to restore the dominion that man lost at the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. That's what he called us for. That's what he, and he sent Jesus to restore us back to that fellowship with the Father, unbroken fellowship, walking and oh, dominating our lives, oh God, in righteousness, first ourselves, and then our spheres of influence, not dominating people but dominating through our giftings, through our anointings, through our callings, through our potential, that we might draw attention to him <laughs> as we walk as lights of the world and salt of the earth. Father, I thank you for those who have tuned in. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for this moment of sharing. And I pray, Lord God, that we would go forth today Continuing in this fellowship, oh, God, we, we're discontinuing the fellowship today between each other, Lord God, but we're just staying connected to you, Lord God. Your word tells us, Lord God, that we should always pray and not faint. And that always pray, that means that we live a life of always being connected to you. Oh, God, we thank you for a calm and well-balanced mind. 
We thank you that we're not caught up in the things as well, but we walk in a perfect peace because our mind is stayed on you. And because of that, Lord God, we can walk in authority. We can walk in power. We can walk in dominion. We can walk as lights of the world, salts of the earth, Lord God, and that we can draw people to your kingdom and righteousness through living your culture, obeying your word by following you closely, by obeying every command, oh God, that we will walk worthy of your calling of your election. And Lord, we thank you right now. We give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you to you here on the Amen Kingdom Transformation broadcast here on our simulcast on Facebook Live and on Kingdom Vision Radio. God bless you and we will be talking to you again real soon. Tune in with us again tomorrow at the same time for kingdom transformation be blessed be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove it is that good perfect and acceptable will of god if any man be in christ he's a new creature you're a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things have become new god bless you talk to you again soon